As a country that accounts for 17.76% of the population on Earth, as of early 2024, India will be the most populous country with population growth reaching 1.435 billion people. It's clear that more and more people are traveling globally and, as a consequence, congestion and flight delays at airports are becoming more frequent, and India's plan to use the A380 could completely change that situation. So, what's the plan? Why did the A380 end this country's problems? Let's find out in today's episode. But, before we start, if you're new, please help us improve this channel even further by double-checking that you've hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our updates. Now, let's dive in. When the Boeing 747 entered service in January 19th of 70 as the world's largest passenger jet, it gave the American manufacturer a dominant position in the large aircraft market for most of the next four decades. Of course, Airbus also refused to sit still. The Toulouse-based manufacturer first presented its double-decker concept in 1994 to challenge the 747. After many years of development, the first A380 prototype was announced in January 2005. The first transatlantic test flight took place in 2006. After many delays, the first commercial flight took place in October 2007 when Singapore Airlines made history with Singapore to Sydney, a new era of the A380 was ushered in. This double-decker plane was a lifeline for airports from overcrowding at the time, especially at crowded airports like London's Heathrow and New York's JFK. Unlike any other on the market, this aircraft has a normal capacity of 525 passengers, but can accommodate up to 853 people. It brings a new level of comfort and luxury to passengers who have been extremely satisfied with their onboard experience. But over time, many airlines discovered that putting 500 to 600 people on each flight was no easy task. Meanwhile, this plane needs to be filled to about 80% to be profitable. Everyone can see that twin-engine aircraft with seats around 300 to 350 would be an easier option for airlines to operate, especially when the Boeing 787 Dreamliner debuted in 2009 with such impressive fuel efficiency that airlines began to reconsider whether they should really continue using the A380 or not. Add to that, the market dynamics have changed. The Super Jumbo Jet was conceived in an era when the hub and spoke model of air travel prevailed. However, as the industry has evolved, there has been a notable shift toward point-to-point -to -point travel. Airlines began to prefer aircraft that could fly directly between secondary cities without visiting major hubs. So Boeing's strategy of focusing on the Dreamliner, a smaller and more maneuverable plane, stands in stark contrast to Airbus's bet on the giant A380. The 787 better meets the growing demand for point-to-point -point travel. Even sadder is that when the global pandemic reduced international travel to zero, the A380 was one of the first aircraft to be put into long-term storage by airlines. Some operators are even claiming their days of flying it are over forever. It can be said that this plane is the biggest victim of the epidemic in aviation. Now, after the pandemic is over, this is the time for the aviation industry to recover. After a period of repression, the opening up and the new normal state being established create many opportunities for growth. Especially the opening of the tourism market, employment, shifting of supply sources, poses a need to take advantage of these opportunities so as not to miss the recovery momentum of the international aviation industry. The Indian aviation industry has seen rapid growth in passenger numbers. However, this spike in demand has not been met by a corresponding increase in the number of pilots, airports, and aircraft. This situation exacerbates difficulties for both passengers and the entire aviation industry. Airlines across the country, including major carriers such as Indigo, Vistara, Air India, Akasa Air, and SpiceJet, have struggled to maintain their flight schedules. Demand often outstrips availability, especially during peak travel periods. Major airports in cities like Delhi, Mumbai, and Bengaluru are operating beyond capacity, leading to congestion, delays, and strained infrastructure. Regional airports are no better, lacking connectivity to smaller cities and remote areas. This shortage limits the growth of air travel in each region and economic development in these regions. Pilot shortages, lack of backup staff, limited infrastructure, short turnaround times for aircraft, and tight cost-effectiveness models has put significant pressure on most of the leading airlines in India. 
This pressure often leads to sudden flight cancellations, unannounced delays, and poor customer service. It's no surprise that most airlines operate at a loss, since most airlines offer similar quality service and serve domestic routes lasting up to two to two and a half hours, passengers often opt for the cheapest seats. This has led airlines to adopt fiercely competitive pricing models, further affecting their financial situation. Faced with this situation, the Indian government is making every effort to resolve the difficulties. India's civil aviation minister, Yotiraditya Sindhya, has announced plans to build 71 new airports in addition to the existing 149 airports across the country. In the past nine and a half years, the authorities have built 75 new airports, bringing the total from 74 airports in 2014 to 149. With further development, the number of airports will reach 220 in the near future. One of the upcoming projects includes a new terminal at Madurapudi Airport, capable of handling 3 million passengers per year. Furthermore, he stated that currently 18 flights are operating from Madurapudi Airport, and this number will increase to 25 in the coming days. It is worth mentioning that the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, has emphasized the importance of infrastructure development at all airports as a means of promoting rapid industrial growth in all districts. However, building dozens of new airports is not a job that can be completed in the next two or three years. Therefore, India needs a more immediate solution. One strategy could accommodate more passengers without increasing the number of aircraft or airports during this period. Yes, that's right. That's the super jumbo jet with unmatched carrying capacity. This aircraft can accommodate up to more than 800 people, about three times more than current twin engine aircraft. This is extremely useful as it can significantly reduce congestion at airports. Although it was said that this plane must be filled to 80% of seats to be profitable, now that is not as difficult as before because the travel demand of Indians is at a much higher level than ever and it will continue to increase. It is entirely possible to fill the seats. To save even more money, instead of buying a new airplane for $445.6 million, airlines can look for used airplanes, which will save a lot of their money. So which airline can put this double-decker plane into its flight deck? India's low-cost airline, Indigo Airlines, is headquartered in Gurgaon and is one of the main operators of the Airbus A320. So it is quite difficult for the company to consider a large aircraft like the A380. On the other hand, the National Airline Air India currently owns an extremely diverse fleet. They include aircraft from both Boeing and Airbus, ranging from narrow bodies like the A320 family to wide bodies like the Boeing 777, 787 Dreamliner, and Airbus A350. Integrating the super jumbo jet into the airline's fleet is also possible. The thing is that this country's aviation growth is mainly due to the demand for travel between domestic areas. So is the A380 really suitable for domestic routes? The answer is probably no. The proof is Japan. Their domestic flight routes using the Airbus aircraft do not operate very smoothly. Perhaps Air India should focus on exploiting the possibility of using the A380 on international routes, especially to other Asian countries. As just mentioned, the government is currently building more airports. Maybe those airports will be built to accommodate large aircraft such as the A380. Currently, there are only four airports in India that can withstand its enormity, which are Mumbai, Delhi, Bengaluru, and Hyderabad. If there are other large airports, the pressure on these four will also be greatly reduced. India's ambitious plan to incorporate the A380 into its aviation strategy could be a game changer for the country and the entire industry. By taking advantage of the plane's huge passenger capacity, India can reduce airport congestion and meet growing air travel demand more efficiently. While challenges remain, such as integrating these super jumbos into existing fleets and infrastructure, the potential benefits are significant. Government efforts to expand airport capacity and infrastructure, coupled with growing demand for air travel, present promising opportunities for the super jumbo jet. As the aviation industry recovers from the pandemic, its strategic use of the A380 could set a new precedent in global air travel. 